Hello and welcome to another video. This is going to be lesson three. Lesson three is going to be talking primarily about mechanics. And I know although it says lesson four up here, this is this is not lesson four, this is lesson three. This is intended to be lesson four, but I decided to make it lesson three because lesson four is a little more it's just different. Um and I think that mechanics is one of the most important things, one of the most fundamental concepts that you have to be aware of and be good at moving forward because realistically we're going to be talking a lot about the game. We'll be talking about a lot of different rotations and concepts and and uh, things you can be doing. And the basis of those are going to be your ability to mechanically not only just understand what I'm saying, but also be able to mechanically do it. And that is really going to truly decide if you are going to uh, find success in solo queue. So for the start of this video, we're going to be talking about hand stretches. We're going to be talking about the importance of stretching and actually warming up your hands before you get into the game. We'll be talking about camera control sensitivity. This is a concept that is very crucial and although it will, may seem overwhelming to some, will be simplified in a way where it will be easily understood and easily adaptable or adapted into. We're then going to be talking about mouse accuracy versus mouse sensitivity. I get a lot of questions about this. Uh, forward, going, going next, we're going to be talking about my personal hotkeys. So what I have been using for years, the hotkey system that I have basically that I basically implemented and have improved over time and I'll be showing you what I do and how if you've seen me play solo queue my screen is is kind of everywhere and you're gonna see why exactly that is because uh, I will be going into detail as to why my hotkeys and why my settings and sensitivity is the way it is um, and then of course I urge you and I encourage you to find your own pace find your own kind of speed at which you're comfortable on that isn't too stressful um, and, and you know, of course, I'll be helping you out with that as well. More, more on that, it's really just trial and error. But then we're going to be going into some drills, and the drills are going to be consisting of a number of a number of drills, really. The first one that I'm going to be talking about is called the Tristana Auto Spacing Drill. I've talked about this drill in the in the past, but I'm going to do it a little more in detail today. We're also going to be talking about the Ezreal Dodge Drill. We're going to be talking about randomizing our dodging movements in game. We're then going to be talking about the F key drill. Next, we're going to be talking about drills for melee champions and how to maneuver your mouse when you're playing a melee champion. We'll also be discussing a little bit about camera in that regard as well. Lastly, we're going to be taking a look at map focus drill and the importance of ARAMs and why ARAMs can really help you become a better player. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about the first concept here, stretching your hand or hand stretches. Now, it should be no surprise to anyone that maintaining good health is very important for longevity. And longevity is very crucial when it comes to climbing because you have to play over and over and over again. In fact, the games that it takes you to get from bronze to platinum is less than the games it'll take most people to get from diamond to master, right? Now, this is only one tier. But the tier is so different that when you look at which rank plays the most games, it's mostly diamond players that are attempting to get to master tier. Because this requires the most games to get to. In fact, from masters, obviously from masters to like to like GM, it's 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 a little bit different. Um and, and this is this is for a lot of reasons. But the main concept that I want to really reiterate here is that longevity is very important and that you have to be able to play the game on a consistent basis every day without hurting yourself with good sensitivity and fast pace. And we're gonna talk about how to do that exactly, but the fundamental basis of that, of succeeding in that, is to make sure that you are stretching your hands effectively. Stretching your hands will improve your blood flow to your hands, it'll warm up your muscles, it'll give them the oxygen to actually keep moving. If you've played in the middle of winter or maybe like your heater is not on full and it's really chilly in your room, your hands are not really moving as well. Your gameplay is going to be affected in a negative way. Hand stretching is very important. I've put a video in the description uh, of this video. So in the description below, there is a video of a doctor. He goes by Dr. Levi Harrison. He will talk to you. It's a five minute video um, and it's the best video that I found because it just gets to the point. There's no uh, nonsense with it. Um, and it'll basically be he'll, he'll basically be talking to you about certain hand drills and, and not drills necessarily but stretches you can do in order to prevent further injury 
Again, I'm not qualified to talk about the minute details of how the hand works, and I'm not a doctor. And so I'm referring you to a doctor that I personally think he's, his video is very to the point and very good to watch. In the description below, it goes over like five drills. Definitely take a look at that. And next, we're going to be talking about mouse accuracy or camera control sensitivity. And then we're going to be talking about mouse accuracy. So now moving forward, getting into detail for this lesson, we're going to first move into camera control sensitivity. And I want you to really just be aware of these things because they're very crucial moving forward into the next few topics. And this is all really just going to be building upon silk. So camera control sensitivity, let's call this for short CCS. Okay, camera control sensitivity. Now CCS is pretty much the same or is directly linked, not necessarily the same, but linked to mouse sensitivity. Now, why is this? Why, what is the relationship between your camera control sensitivity and your mouse sensitivity? So let's say hypothetically, that your mouse is an option is in not option but 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 is in area a okay we're gonna we're gonna use this or you know what let's actually go ahead and for the sake of the topic here put it here okay so this is where your mouse location is okay so mouse location is here now let's say hypothetically that Baron fight arises. Okay, so now obviously this is not going to be the case in the screen because you can see that nobody is doing Nash, it's not even up. But disregarding what is actually happening in the game and just looking at the concept that for, for the sake of the argument or the, for the sake of the concept, let's say that Nash is about to happen. Well, for you to look at Nash or for you to be able to decide what to do with Nash, you have to do first a few things. The first thing you have to do is you have to first gather information, okay? You have to gather info. Then you have to process the information. And then you have to act upon the information, okay? Now, processing the information and acting upon in the information is th th this really boils down to experience, foresight, and skill. But gathering information, this is the basis of it. This is the most important thing. You cannot process, nor can you act upon information. You cannot respond to something without not having the information to actually respond to it. So you have to be able to gather the information before you start processing it and then acting for a solution upon that. Now, how do we gather information? Well, let's call this the area of focus. Okay? The area of focus, hypothetically in this situation, is Nash Pit, because that is what I'm going to say. Let's say, as I said, Baron is happening. Enemy is fighting for Baron. Of course, this could be changed. Maybe you're there going for your raptors. Maybe your area of focus is on your raptors. Maybe your area of focus is on your wolves. Maybe area of focus is, you know, in mid lane somewhere. That's not the point. The point is, in this situation, let's say that the area of focus is Baron Pit and your mouse movement is in location A. Well, now there's three things you can do in order to gather information. So just to reiterate, the, the, the whole concept of this is, is gathering um, Right, Ga gathering info. We must be able to gather info before we can process and then act upon that. So there's three ways you can do this. The, the first way is you can use F keys. Well, unfortunately, none of your teammates or a lot of your teammates not, might not be there for you to F key onto them. So if you have nobody to F key onto, well, can't do that. Let's eliminate this option. Now we have two more options. The first option is we can click, we can click our map, and the second option, or after, or the third option in this case, would be to pan. So we can pan our camera, and if you don't know what that means is when you move your mouse to a certain region, let's say you move your mouse here, your entire field of view, your camera, your movement, it, it moves to that look, it moves towards where you're panning, where your mouse is, where your mouse is going. So you have options to click or you have options to pen. If one of your teammates is there, by all means, F key to them, and then you can, you can see the whole fight happening. But if there's no teammates around the area of focus, 
then your two options is to either click around the area of focus or to pan around the area of focus. Now, let's try both of these options because we've eliminated the idea of F keys. Well, let's say, hypothetically, again, for the, for the sake of the argument here, that Nash is the play. Well, you have two options. You need to look at Bower and Pitt immediately. That is what, that is the area of focus. That is where you must gather the information in order to act upon it. Do I give Nash or do I contest it? Do I make a cross play or, or, or do I FF? It really depends on what you are able to gather. Does the enemy team composition have enough damage to kill the Baron at this amount of HP? Or does it not? These things will decipher whether you move to the objective to contest it versus not. And this could of course be applied to any situation, whether you're ganking, whether you're roaming, whether you're looking at dragon, whether you're going for a camp, it doesn't matter. Now, going into the idea of looking at Baron Pit, there's two ways we can do this. Now, the first way, let's call this option A, right? So we're gonna call this option A. Um, or let's call this option one because I've already used the letter A and I don't want to confuse you, which is to go to location A, which is your mouse location, and move it to location B. Now, the reason you have to look at location B is you have to click the Baron pit in order to process the information. Now, for you to move your mouse from A to B takes X seconds versus moving your mouse from option A to let's say option C. This takes Y seconds. Well, Y is less seconds than X. If you are taking less seconds by using Y and gathering information faster, because that is the, that is the whole objective, it is to gather information so then we can process it and then we can act upon it. Y allows us to do that. Y is superior in this case. Therefore, panning your camera right again i'm going to call option one option one is clicking which is which is which is here what we're doing and option two uh, the, the screen's getting a little bit crowded so i'm not writing options here but option two is to pan your camera and you're panning your camera to c now if c if, if going from a to c takes y seconds and going from a to b takes x seconds it doesn't take a genius to know that Y is superior to X because Y takes less time to get to the area of focus than X does, which allows you to gather information quicker. Okay? So, well, let's go back to this here because this is, what, this, this is the whole, this is the basis of why we even first talked about this. CCS equals MS, which is camera control sensitivity is very directly linked to mouse sensitivity because in order to pan your camera, your mouse has to be relatively sensitive and quick. Okay? If your, cam if your mouse is taking two seconds to get to B, that's a problem. Cut that down, increase the sensitivity, have your mouse not go from A to B in two seconds, but A to B in, let's say, one second. Therefore, when you, can when you pan your camera from A to C and your camera actually moves down to look at the Nasher pit, it takes a lot less time than it would originally if you just simply increase your mouse speed or your mouse sensitivity, you can call it, you can call it MS mouse speed. You can call it mouse sensitivity. I may I may uh, mix the two, you know, uh, but they but they do they do mean the same thing, right? CCS equals to MS. These two are very directly linked. Camera control sensitivity is directly linked to mouse sensitivity because by moving your mouse, you can then move your you know, and then obviously increasing your camera speed, you you will look at the focus or the area of focus a lot quicker. This is very crucial moving forward into um, everything that we talk about. Right? We're going to be talking about mouse accuracy versus mouse sensitivity because there is a, there's a thin line between um, certain things. And we're, obviously, I'm going to go more into detail about that. But this is the basis of all of it. Okay, This is the basis of you succeeding in these drills. This is the basis of you succeeding in-game mechanically. You can understand the game at a very high level you can begin to watch all of the coaching sessions but if you don't have the proper kit and the proper awareness or ability or competence to actually perform the mechanical requirement needed then you won't succeed okay this is very crucial and this is the the the, the basis of, of everything moving forward in this in this video so with that being said that is the 
end of my explanation with camera control sen sensitivity. We're gonna now move on to mouse accuracy versus mouse sensitivity because there is a bit of a uh, disclaimer and a thin line between the two. So we, we do wanna make sure we talk about that, okay? Okay, so let's move forward and talk about mouse accuracy versus mouse sensitivity. Now, one thing that I want to make sure that you guys are aware of is it is very crucial to be accurate than just be fast. If you're just fast, it doesn't mean anything. Fast mouse does not mean good mouse, it just means fast mouse. It can be very uncontrolled. You have to have control with speed. And if you lack the speed, you can up the speed. But you do not up the speed to the point where you have lost control. Control is the most important part. Control is the most fundamental part. Speed comes over time. Speed comes over practice control. Without it, you can't play the game. So. My mouse speed is relatively high, it's like 80, so I don't really move my mouse much. Um, and I'll, I'll talk more about this as I, as I go into detail with my hotkeys uh, in the next topic here, but right now I just want to talk primarily about mouse accuracy versus mouse speed, um, or mouse sensitivity versus mouse accuracy here. Um, now, in this case, this is quite accurate. Let's put some words down. Uh, so I'll put a word down here and then put a word down here. Another one here. I can only put three, so I'm just gonna do that. Now, the point is I have to make sure that I am clicking all of the words. Now, what really deciphers whether I misclick a word, so, so now, I, again, I don't wanna click here. I don't wanna click here. You see where I'm clicking? This is not good. I want to click on the word. I wanna make sure that the word highlights. As you can see, the word is highlighting when, when I cover my mouse to it. Same thing here, same thing here. Make sure that my mouse is accurate. But I can't do that if my mouse speed is at 100. Now watch this, this is something that I can't control. Now I have 80, right? My, my, my mouse speed is 80, but it's 80 because I can do this. I can, I can consistently con click inside the circles. Now obviously I'm missing a few times, right? But you get the idea, like I have control over this. But if I up it to 100, now all of a sudden, this is a lot harder to do, right? Try kiting. Try kiting. I'm missing. It's, it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder to find that click. Okay? But when you decrease the mouse speed, you're still going to have that speed, but you're also going to have control. You're not going to misclick as much. I canceled there. You get the idea. You're not going to misclick as much. This is very crucial. Do not sacrifice your control for your speed. Now, you should, in order to succeed, if you're like, I don't know, if you're like, like 50, 40 mouse speed, or let's say you're at 50 mouse speed. Again, also your DPI is very important, okay? My, my DPI is 1800. 1800 DPI with uh, 80 mouse speed. Well, yeah, that's my sensitivity. That's where I'm comfortable at. Okay, now obviously you should look more into your DPI rather than tamper with this, um, which, which is more advisable thing to do. But if your mouse speed is at 50, or let's say your DPI is at like 1100, well increase that, increase it to 1500, increase it to 1700, or in this case, your mouse speed increases to 60. See how it feels. If you can control it, right? Okay, so the, the, like the, the, the main really kind of guide here is if you can control it, up it. Up it until you can't control it. And then practice on that speed. Okay? You try 70 after a few games. Okay, well, I mean, I can still control this. This is pretty good. It's not bad. I can go a little faster. I'm not losing accuracy. The second your accuracy starts to lose or drop, that's when you go back. That's when you're like, okay, well, I don't want to push too much. I don't want to have super fast mouse speed. We've already talked about the importance of mouse speed and why it's important. But it's also important to make sure that you have the accuracy. If you're misclicking, then your, your, your speed means nothing. Okay, well, for me, I got to 80. And now when I'm at 80, I feel pretty good. Like, this is really nice for me. I can control it. I can move re relatively fast, okay? But if I up it to 90, well, all of a sudden, I can still control it, but I'm going to be prone to misclicking a little more. This is a little too quick. It's a little too sensitive. It's very important that you find that threshold 
that you're comfortable in, whether you have to tamper with your DPI or, or the in-game um, settings um, in the most non-destructive fashion, of course, right? Um, you have to find what's comfortable for you and never sacrifice your, sp your accuracy for your speed. Okay? This was a bit of a less informative example, but we're going to be talking more about this moving forward. This is very crucial that you understand that you could sabotage yourself by clicking too fast and not having the proper control. So with that being said, let's now talk a little more, a bit more about my hotkeys and also again, finding your own pace. Okay, so let's move on to the topic of my hotkeys and finding your own pace in the game. So generally, we can, we'll, we'll just go kind of go top down. I mean, this is all, this should all be standard. What, what, one thing that I'm gonna actually talk about here, or the first thing that I'm gonna talk about here, most important, is my F key usage, which if you go to camera control, I have a very unique, and this is very unique to me personally, uh, settings that I, that I usually have. So the center camera on champion option is my middle mouse button, right? Not my middle, sorry, my side mouse button. So if there's a fight happening here, right? Let's say I'm, I'm fighting, I'm a team fight. Um, and let's say that we have some bots we'll just put in or just some dummies so i don't know let's say the team fight is here mm. and i mean it could, it could obviously get really messy right the, the whole the whole situation can get really messy and, and a lot of the times when you're when you're when you're fighting and, and there's these spells being thrown out you might not exactly see what's going on so it's very important that you have an option where you have a middle mouse button where you're fighting and then you you basically you center yourself which is a topic that i'm going to go into detail about in a second in this video and you're able to continue to you know throw out your spells and whatnot uh but it's very important that you have that middle mouse center button because while you're kiting you know the the the, the pace of the fight can shift right if the, the pace of the fight shifts towards this angle um and you have to kite this way then immediately putting your middle mouse button and then moving is a lot better than, for example, doing something like this where you're trying to run away, okay? So this is a very crucial kind of tool you should be using. So with that being said, let's move forward. So on my Ally 1, I have space. So this, this is where it gets a little unique, right? And this is why I'm going to bring up the keyboard here along with the pen. Um, and basically, it's very difficult to reach the F keys, mainly because your hands are on Q, W, E, R, okay? So because it's so difficult to reach the F keys, you can bind these keys to the bottom of your keyboard, which means that ally one could be Z, this could be ally two, this could be ally three, and this could be ally four. So essentially what's happening here is your hands are still on Q, W, E, R, but you're using your thumb, right? Your, your, your thumb will be somewhere in this region here on the keyboard. Uh, I could obviously, <laughs> these, uh, these drawings are not the greatest. Your thumb's gonna be somewhere in this region which you can simply just pan around and you know you can see what's going on um and again f keys are they're so crucial to to be able to to do to really just increase your overall camera you know control of course you can still improve without f keys but always uh adding f keys to your ability of skills is going to be beneficial um for, for really any player F keys are better to use than just clicking the camera, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're still a bad player. You could still be a very, very good and talented player without using F keys at all. So there's a lot of players who do that as well. Um, so this is not a necessity, but it is a recommended improvement uh, method, which is really important. Now, obviously, moving down here, right? We look at the look at the HUD here. The HUD should not be that big. Like 31 to 40 is usually okay, you know, uh, scale, right? Um, you see. So we're gonna call these two, um, let's get on the map of this here, get rid of that. We're gonna call these two uh, items on your screen, the HUD and the minimap, sources of information, okay? Sources of information is very important. I actually don't have my pencil, so this is not the greatest, but, uh, so I'm not, I'm not even gonna write because I don't have my pencil yet, but um, sources of information are 
going to be these two, you know, your HUD and your minimap, because again, you're going to be looking at summoner spells, your timings, you're going to be looking at your, your abilities, you're going to be looking at your stats to compare with other players, your items, your actives, your, you know, all that stuff. Um, and of course here you're looking at the whole game being played out from a, from a minimap scale, right? Um, these are very important to have that are not, they don't want to be too small, right? They don't want to be too tiny because if they're too small, you're going to have trouble like rearranging things and, you know, it's, it's it, you can have a smaller HUD. I think a smaller HUD is acceptable, but I think it's going to be a little harder to see if your abilities are up. Um, so generally a HUD scale around 30 to 40 is, is pretty okay. And then minimap is really important because you can't have a minimap too small. Because if your minimap is way too tiny, I've had players actually play like this, it's really awkward and hard to see. Now, if the minimap becomes too big, now, now it's an obstruction. So these two sources of information should always be important. They're important. You want to be gaining information from them, obviously, but you gain information from them as long as they don't become an obstruction. You scale them to the point where they aren't an obstruction but can still serve you, okay? And of course, it's also comfort, right? There's a thin line between comfort and doing something completely wrong because you can be comfortable with doing something totally wrong, which is having like, you know, your, your minimap skill giant and maybe you're comfortable with that. But if that's the case, then you have to kind of break out of that habit. Okay, this is a little bug, but you get the idea. Um, it's not great to have the minimap too, uh, too small or too big. All right, so moving down, uh, make sure you have the um, attack, like you wanna see the mana costs so not all of your abilities, this is really important, uh, mainly because if you have like 150 mana, okay, well, I can get away with like using Q three times, right? Maybe I can get away with like, you know, a combo if I have X, Y, Z amounts of mana. It's really important to, to see. Um, and I highly don't recommend people turn this off because I know people sometimes do and they, they can still play the game effectively. Um, but this is really important for just those niche moments that you actually need to, need to see your mana costs. Um, also, I've just gotten so used to them that this is like really comfortable for me. It's very important to have this. Um, this is a, a, the, I'm jittering a little bit, as you can see. This is a use, use movement prediction. Not really necessary. A lot of people have questions about this, but uh, I mean, if, you're, if your ping is good, so I'm at 36 here. If my ping is good, you don't really need it. The only difference is if you turn it off, your champion looks like it turns around. This is really weird to me. It feels slow, right? This feels weird and slow. Uh, but this feels kind of like, okay, because like I can react quicker. I don't know. This is just comfort. It probably doesn't actually change anything. Um, but I'm just going to answer that because there's a lot of people that have questions about that. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to be doing an extensive video specifically on settings. Uh, but for now, I just want to kind of cover the basics of it. And again, one of the most important things you want to start doing is when implementing uh, F keys, bind them to something that you feel comfortable with. Now, of course, I have spacebar as my bottom lane. Like when I'm playing jungle, right? I have spacebar as my bottom lane. Um, maybe your spacebar is your center. For a lot of people, space bar is to center your champion. Okay, so for this first uh, drill, we're going to be talking about the Tristana auto spacing drill. This drill is really good for you to just get warmed up with your mouse. It's really good for you to also just practice canceling autos um, against or, or, or forcing the opponent to cancel autos against you with higher range. And what you're going to notice is you want to generally have a champion with slightly higher range than the Tristana. In this case, I'm playing Kindred. However, I have lethal tempo, so the range will increase temporarily, and that's the part where I want to emphasize canceling autos against your Tristana. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into a custom game, okay, or a private match um, in practice tool, and we're going to press Control Shift T, and this is what's going to do. It's gonna, the hot key for this is it's going to add maximum HP to Tristana, okay, or the bot here. So we're going to give her, and I already did this, right? So I gave her like 5,000 HP. So as you can see, she's very danky. If the bot is higher level than you, the bot will chase you. If you are higher level than the bot, I think the bot will run away from you. Um, don't quote me on that because the AI is a bit wonky, I would imagine. I'm not entirely um, completely familiar with like the AI's movements and like ex exactly everything. Um, before 10 minutes, the bot will go bottom lane. After 10 minutes, the bot will go mid lane, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna buy, and now all we're doing is we're just gonna hit Tristana, and all we're doing is we're spacing, autoing, spacing, autoing. You could also, what you could do is you can just get rid of all the minions here as well. Now you have a cleaner kind of, you don't have to get minion blocked and whatnot, and the screen is a lot screen because it's just you and Tristana. And what you're trying to do again, notice what I'm trying to do. 
Oh, actually, <laughs> I forgot to tell you. Turn off all the towers. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm hitting Tristana and making sure that I'm not cancelling autos. And I'm making sure also that I am not misclicking. So now what I don't want to do is click. Now notice what my next clicks are going to be here. I don't want to click here. When I'm autoing, I don't want to click here. I don't want to misclick because that's going to force me to go into Tristana. I'm using my A click range to maximize my autos and then also be away from her, right? So auto move up, auto move up. There's, right, I'm autoing, I'm moving up. One thing that you're gonna notice is as I'm dragging Tristana to the Nexus, as you notice, I'm also forcing my screen up. And again, when I do this movement here, right, when I'm doing this movement where I'm autoing, 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 and then I move up like this, this is because my mouse speed is quick and my camera speed is really fast. This is something, again, that I talk about and we, we already discussed in this video the relation between the mouse speed and the camera speed. So again, let's re uh, just rewatch this for a quick second. What you're going to do is you're going to press Control Shift O, and what Control Shift O is going to do, make sure you do not press Control Shift P because it'll reset the game, um, and then you have to do this all over again. But you press you press Control Shift O, and all you're going to do is you're going to you're going to add 30 seconds to the game, and Tristan will be back with full HP and ready to be you know, auto, I guess. So she will jump on you a little bit, but all you're doing again, same thing, is notice what I'm doing. I am. Auto, okay, so I just click there. I'm gonna auto her, and as my screen changes, my mouse, in relation to my camera control, you can see that I'm always in a position where I can effectively kite her. Right? I'm not kiting her, and then this happening. Like this is weird, right? This is weird. If you constantly maneuver the screen as you're kiting. Because again, this is not something that takes time, or a lot of time, right? Because you're autoing and you have an auto cooldown. During this auto cooldown, move your mouse up. While you're autoing, move your mouse up. You don't have to kill her, by the way. Uh, there's no point. Okay? So, the next thing that we're going to talk about, is the second segment of why this drill is so effective, is it also helps you practice the micro spacing. Okay, okay? so now that uh, we're going to be talking about the second kind of segment of this drill, which is going to be canceling Tristano's autos through microspacing. Now I'm just going to show you an actual example of me doing it here. So here, I'm just going to auto Tristana. I'm going to wait for lethal tempo to proc because I don't have uh, equal range. This will be easier with champions that you have a uh, higher range. So now that I have lethal tempo, notice what I'm going to do with the Tristana's autos. You notice how I'm canceling the autos. Now I'm misclicking, of course, that was like really bad. But I'm basically canceling... So she hits me there, right? Uh, so I'm basically canceling the autos that Tristan is trying to hit me with. And this is really important to make sure that you're hitting a player while also being able to move back, right? Let's try that again. Of course, I'm not the greatest at it, but uh, this is just the mechanical aspect of the game. Which, uh, again, same concept for hitting her. Right, where just waiting for lethal tempo to proc, and if it does proc, then again, now we start canceling the autos, making sure that we are not misclicking onto her. Now, she might walk into you, and you're gonna obviously you'll get hit. Right, I'm gonna cheat a little bit with the slow there, of course. But all we're doing here, and again, you have to be very accurate as well. She's gonna stop hitting you after a while because you know you'll be too high HP. Um, and now you just do that over and over again, make sure you walk her to the nexus. Making sure that you're cancelling her autos with your higher range, making sure that you actually have a champion that has higher range than her. Now, of course, if you do this with Caitlyn, it's going to be a lot easier. Um, versus if you do it with, like, Kindred with Lethal Tempo, the range is going to be a little bit different. And that's, like, how tighter your clicks have to be. This is a very good drill to start practicing. And now what you're going to do is, based on the champion that you generally play, and of course you want to do this with a champion that you enjoy, a champion that you actively play, um, go ahead and up the, uh, the attack speed on that. So let's say I build some attack speed items. Now, of course, I could, you know, I could just go recurve bow right, like twice, and I can get a ton of attack speed doing this, right? Um, but now all you're gonna do, so so actually, what you should be doing is you should be, for the sake of the drill and for the sake of practicing, actually, let me let me go ahead and just clarify, um, or actually correct myself here, is you should be buying items based on the most common bases of your champion. So if you're playing an AD carry, a very common base is Noon Quiver. Okay? Now, of course, you could do what I did earlier, which is buy, like, six recurve bows and get super, you know, 
attack speed. That's great to practice your speed. And I, and I encourage that. That's also fine to do. That's good. That's, that's something you would like to do if you feel like your mouse is too slow. But in this case, where you're just practicing the familiarity of your champion through more of like a kind of, uh, not, not necessarily a knowledge aspect, but really just getting your body used to or your hands used to playing a certain champion, um, because you're, you're, you're generally doing recalls, and recalls are, are equal to very common attack speed, uh, like small attack speed units that you get. You know, every game you're buying Noon Clipper, every game you might eventually get like your Kraken Slayer, right? And of course, by doing that, your attack speed will goes up. And in doing so, what you do essentially is you practice with the bases that you have, or with the items that you have. So, okay, well, this is my attack speed with like, you know, my uh, just my Noon Quiver, and I have uh, the Berserker Shoes, right? But then, of course, now let's say you base, and you know, let's say you have more attack speed. Um, now here, I'll just buy like a bunch, like I'll buy, you know, like uh, this, right? And now, let's say I have more now, and now, of course, now you should. I strongly urge. Okay, well, I just one shot her. I strongly urge you to practice uh, your speed. Okay. Again, after ten minutes, just sana just end up going to mid lane. And again, same thing here. I do urge that you, or do I? I do encourage you to just practice your speed here, making sure that you're not canceling any autos. Alright, this is very crucial. Also, making sure of one important thing, which I actually did a mistake here, and I don't know if you caught that mistake, but when you're fighting the Tristana, right, and let's kite her towards the tower. So when she goes towards the tower, now, if Tristana's around the tower, now in this case she isn't, right, she's running away, you want to make sure you have the auto champion only on. That's very important. Um, and... You, you can find it in the settings. I'm not entirely sure exactly where it is, but um, I think it's somewhere here. Yes, target champions only. This is very important, right? Because if the champion, or if the enemy champion is somewhere here, well, and you're autoing her, especially if, especially if she's moving, right? And, and you, you're autoing her, you don't want to auto the tower, okay? You, you just don't want to hit the tower. So what you do instead is you, you use this. Now, obviously, I'm not allowed to auto this tower because of the first tower being up, so let's go ahead and show you the example here. But same concept, really, is I don't want to auto the tower. While I'm autoing, I can easily misclick on tower. People do this a lot. So by using the attack-only champion, notice what's going to happen. My, the inside of my mouse is actually going to go, like, it's going to be glowing red. So now, when I hover my mouse over a target and not the tower, see, if I hit the tower, I'll just walk towards the tower, right? But if I hit the champion, now all of a sudden... Game is different. Okay, we're not losing any autos. All right, let's move on to the second drill. This is going to be the Ezreal dodge spacing drill and also randomizing your dodge movements. So, some theory behind this we're going to be talking about first before we actually get onto the drill. Now, <clears throat> when we think about kiting, when we think about outplays in League of Legends through mechanics and micro movements, there is some level of thought going into most things that end up, that actually happen the, the 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 outplays and the dodges there is some level of thought okay now if there's an enemy champion here and this champion is throwing skill shots at me okay just now imagine a linear skill shot could be anything i don't care right it could be just any skill it's going to be he's going to be throwing champ uh, like skill shots at me from a certain range which I have to, of course, I have to dodge them, either this way or this way. I, if I'm kiting this way, I will dodge them this way or this way, right? Um, now, when I'm hitting them, let's say I, I auto them, and then I move up. Auto them and I move up. Auto and move up. Auto and move up. Now, what I've essentially done in this sequence here... Second. What I've essentially done in this sequence here is I've autoed plus moved up. I then autoed and then moved up and then autoed and moved up. This is a very reoccurring kind of sequence that I just displayed. Auto, move up, auto, move up, auto, move up. Now let's say I'm the opponent and I see myself autoing, moving up, autoing, moving up, autoing, moving up. Well, I'm going to most likely hit the skill shot this way. 
This is your line of movement. This is what you've done for the past one, two, and then, well, if you did it on, on the first time, you did it on the second time, most likely you'll do the same thing on the third time. So now let me as your opponent, as the enemy champion, hit the skill shot in an angle where I'm most likely going to be hitting you. Okay? This is what is most likely going through 99 players' heads, percent of players' heads, when they're thinking of, or when, when they have to hit a skill shot towards um, somebody who is like kiting. So now what do we do? Well, we randomize this a little bit. Auto, move up, auto, move down, auto, move up, auto, move up, auto, move down. Right? In a different variation, you could do auto, up, auto, and then go like that, auto, move up, right? Like, you're you're essentially not as... There is no sequence to it. Or if there is a sequence to it, the sequence is not that easy to understand. Okay? It's not as easy to grasp. And so what's going to happen is the opponent will... Throw the skill shot based on where he assumes that you're going to go. Now, if you've autoed, you're moving up. He's, he's, he's watching you. You just move down. And now, you're going to notice this is going to be a really crucial kind of concept to, to understand when we look at the champion like Ezreal. So here's Ezreal with 5k HP. Okay? He's going to run at me. Now, I'm going to get hit by most of these. Okay? Okay, so I tried to dodge that one too. But see what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna hit by most of these, but this is to... Try to randomize your movements a little bit. Okay, so here I thought I was gonna move up, but he hit it down. All right, and this is not easy to do. In fact, it's going to get a lot easier in mid lane. Because in mid lane, you're going to have more space to dodge. Here, you're kind of pinned against the wall. Okay, so we're going to let him go. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the game timer by 10 minutes. So we're going to have him go in mid lane. It's a little bit easier to dodge in mid lane. Mainly because the, the lane's bigger. Like, not bigger, but it's wider. And there's more space. Right? This feels more congested than this. I, I don't know why, but it just feels better. <laughs> But anyways, same thing, same kind of concept. We're gonna be hitting Gezreel. He's gonna opt to move down for some reason. Not sure why. That's okay, same thing, here. If he does that, just reset the game. He'll go back to mid lane. And now again, I'm trying to make sure I'm hitting him. But also making sure that I'm trying to dodge the Qs. Right, so now obviously he's moving to bottom lane, but if he was a high- Now, the why he's doing this is because he's still level 2, which is quite problematic. Um, so if he is not level 2, he will just kind of be running down the nexus again. You just try this on your own. Um, for the sake of the drill here, all you're doing again is randomizing your movements. You're not going to be clicking up three times. You can click up twice and then move down. Maybe you click up three more times and you move down. Every player has their pattern. Every player has the ability to be read really easily. The higher level you go, the more you're going to see this. You're going you're gonna to see more unpredictable movements. The more you're going to have to read the opponent's movements. In higher elo, people will fake auto, for example. That's another kind of variation of this, right? In some way, I, there, there is a relation here, but it's, it's kind of hard to ex explain without the actual examples here. But again, to summarize it, move, moving your champion, not in a sequence every single time when you're kiting, but also trying to, but also just rather randomizing these movements. Okay, so you move up, auto, move up, auto, maybe you move down, auto. They're not expecting you to move down. They're expecting you to move up because you moved up twice already. Try this in your own games. You have to be mechanical with it. And uh, this will be something that is going to greatly benefit you. On the ladder, the higher rank you go, you're going to meet players that are going to obviously be able to respond to this eventually. But you practice this and this is going to really separate you from the mass majority of the people playing League of Legends today. Okay? Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and now move on to 
another drill. This is going to be the third drill. This is going to be the F key drill specifically for jungle players. Now, this drill here, this is also for everybody, right? Where I talk about, about this is mouse movement and camera. This is all like, this is universal. Everyone should be able to do this. Every single world. It's not role dependent, nor is it role dictated in any sense of the matter. But this next drill where I talk about F keys, this although can still help laners because the idea of F keys is still going to be beneficial in any lane. However, this is primarily for junglers who are struggling to look at the map as they clear the camps. Okay, so let's talk about the next drill. The third one, this is going to be primarily for junglers. Also, very valuable for laners. Not necessarily built for laners. However, very valuable for really any role because it allows you to practice your camera control. Now, basically what you're doing is, you know, my F keys are bound to the bottom of my keyboard which I'm able to I'm just kind of shifting through right here. And what you want to do now is you want to start clearing your camps while also making sure that you're pressing F keys effectively. This can be a little bit tricky in the beginning, right? So making sure that you're clearing effectively. No mistakes in the clear. I may make some. And in between the downtimes of your clear, you want to make sure that you're looking at the bottom lane or mid lane or top lane, right? So I messed up here a little bit because I uh, should have just not eat, and I should would have eaten the other way there, but that's okay. And again, making sure that uh, we're just looking at all of our laners as we clear the jungle. This is a very good drill for you to, again, making sure that while you're I also mess up here too while you're practicing the drill so see how the raptors don't now I'm wasting autos on raptors see like I've messed up three autos there it's tragic but that's okay while you're doing this uh, making sure that your eyes and I don't drag them either so this is pretty bad um, while you're doing this make sure you're dragging your not 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 your sorry while you're doing this drill make sure that your eyes are locked to your camera and everything that you're doing here is in your peripheries. Now, I'm going to be honest, it's actually quite hard to explain the game while playing at the same time. Um, so I commend any streamer um, who, who does this regularly. But basically, your peripheral vision is all here in the jungle. Okay, this is your peripheries. Everything here, this is where your eyes are focused on. Your eyes are focused on your map, and your peripheries are here. When you have to fight somebody, if there's an enemy who's fighting you, and, they, and then of course you can lock your eyes towards them and, and, and engage and fight. But making sure that during the fight, you are glancing at the minimap for even a fraction of a second. And just to make sure, like, where are you exactly? You want to always make sure, and I learned, I learned this the hard way, where I would get into a fight in the jungle, I would get invaded and I would fight. And my eyes would just be tunneled in the fight and I wouldn't actually see the minimap. This is a issue that a lot of players used to struggle, or I used to struggle with this, and a lot of players currently now struggle with this. But while you're fighting, just lock, just quickly glance at your map. See what the heck you're doing. See where the space is behind you and beside you. Like, who's helping you? Are your laners moving? Because that really will dictate the way you play the fight. And again, as you get better and better at this, making sure that you have perfected your clear. And all you just do is, is just do this over and over again. Okay? And that is the drill for junglers this is the f key drill make sure that you are constantly using f keys again just to reiterate clicking your mini map is still fine there's a lot of junglers that do that that's absolutely okay however f keys are just superior all right all right so let's talk about the fourth drill this is going to be the garen or i guess the melee champion auto drill and all you're doing is you're just getting a melee champion getting him really tanky and you're going to auto and drag them to the nexus. A lot of the times when you're playing top lane or you're playing melee champions, a lot of your clicks have to be very tight in many cases. So as you can see, I'm just dragging the Alistar. If he knocks you away or he exhausts you or something, this is running that, you can simply just queue back onto them. The point of this drill is really just to get your mouse, making sure they're not canceling autos on your champion. And... Also, making sure that your inputs are accurate. So notice what's happening here. Where, now what I'm gonna do here actually is I'm gonna buy items because he's very tanky. 
Um, right? So, just get whatever. Uh, and where is he here? So, so obviously, all we're going to be doing here, same concept. Now, when he's running away from you, right? When he's running away from you here, you want to auto him while also inputting. So, I messed up a little bit here, but as you can notice, I'm autoing and moving. While the auto animation is going off, your mouse should already be positioned for the next input, which is to move upwards. Right? A lot of players, what they do is they do this. I'm going to show you in a second if this guy's going to walk back here. I should. He's right there. Okay. A lot of players will auto and just stand still. Okay, so... Let me just get him to run away from me first. Or we can just... <laughs> That'll work. A lot of players... So now he's running away, right? A lot of players... Okay, well... They'll just auto-attack, and they won't be moving up. You notice how I'm just autoing, and then I'm moving, I'm autoing, and then I'm moving? What you want to do... Is you want to... Move your cursor to the location at which you want to move to the second the auto input is sent. So once Garen's auto is already registered towards the opponent champion, that's when you should already be moving your mouse. Otherwise, you're going to have a really awkward time actually moving against like better top laners. Okay? Anyway, so it's a rather simple drill. This is going to be the melee champion Drill again, just a very basic, basic drill to just warm up your uh, your hands with, to get really familiar with the dynamics and the feeling of playing your champion. And it's just a very overall drill that will just benefit you, as as they all are. So we're gonna talk about another one, and uh, this next drill we're gonna talk about is the map focus drill. So the map focus drill is. Probably one of the most basic, simple drills. I think people have already heard of this, or they already do this. But really simple. All you're going to do is for every CS you take, for every minion that you take, now obviously this guy is just bullying me, um, every minion you take, you want to look at your minimap. Okay? You want to make sure... So I took a minion here, looked at my minion. Now obviously you could do this where Alistar isn't, right? Where you hit the minion here. And then you look at the mini map. You hit the minion, you look at the mini map. Hit another mini you hit another minion, you just focus on the mini map. This is really basic drill. This doesn't really require a extensive explanation. The benefits of this drill is that you will just improve your mini map awareness by constantly looking at the map. This is just teaching your body to be able to do something over and over and over again. And a lot of these drills, they really require you to be aware that this is just a repetitive motion and the more you do it although will feel or maybe boring or even meaningless at some point will benefit you when you actually get into game because your body will remember the movements that you're making now when you play the game okay this is really important when you put all these drills together you will start becoming a overall better player so Moving forward, we're going to now talk about ARAM, screen focus, self-position, awareness, and spacing conditions. This is going to be a rather small and generalized explanation. Moving forward with the last topic, again, this one is going to be more of a generalized kind of simple explanation. I will be talking about these things more in detail, a lot of which will be fairly repetitive on my channel in the next coming months. And the last topic here says ARAMs, screen focus, self-position awareness and space conditions a lot of of these 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 generalized terms they're rather simple just kind of really just tie into each other we talked about screen focus we talked about how you're able to auto attack and you're and you're hitting the opponent but making sure that your screen is at a point where you can you can see the whole fight being being uh being taken place and you don't lose yourself okay of course your center camera only champion or center center camera self option is available and make sure you're actually using that i think the general command there is spacebar and this of course ties in with with your self position awareness because that is generally what that is it is it is just your ability to be aware of where you are positioning and based on that you can then move your camera to continue to output the damage that your champion needs to do um and it's really just the same concept of of, of space conditions and space conditions are actually really interesting right 
because this is this is uh, something that's understood by playing a lot of a rounds. Okay, a rounds are really good for practicing because they allow you to practice your skirmishing. They allow you to understand other champions, and they allow you to also. Again, it's also kind of a drill where you're dodging, but you're actually playing a game. And I think Arams are a great way to also warm up for solo queue. Now, when I talk about space conditions, you could be here. Let's say you're, let's say you're an ADC, okay? And if you move maybe 500 units this way, maybe this is Alistar. Okay, well, you don't want to get knocked up because then his team can engage, let's say. And so with that being said, we have a condition against Alistar. Now, Alistar's team is, let's say his team is here, right? Uh, this is his team. Of course, your team is irrelevant here. doesn't really matter. This is just your positioning as, as an ADC, so this is going to be you. Um, now, your space conditions are I can only really move up to auto attack Alistar if he's completely on CD and no one back here can actually hit me. That's acceptable, but that's a condition. Now I'm going to be talking more about space conditions in the future videos where we actually look at more specific footage and I will break these down uh, in their you know specific uh, in their specifics. Um, but that will happen over time. That's not something that um, I can just start talking about today. And again, there's a lot to cover. So the generalized explanation of space conditions it is your mental checklist to actually hit an opponent versus don't hit the opponent because they have xyz cooldown available and then they can engage and they can kill me okay this kind of awareness is built through playing a lot of a rounds okay now we're going to be talking about these things in further detail in future videos but just for a generalized explanation, this is kind of the, the, the surface level kind of scope of what we're going to be going into, okay? That is it for the last topic. This was lesson three mechanics. We, just to summarize the whole video very quickly, we talked about hand stretches, the importance of hand stretches and why making sure that you living a healthy lifestyle is going to be really crucial for the longevity of your success in league we talked about camera control sensitivity we talked about how a higher sensitivity will benefit you in many cases we talked about mouse accuracy versus mouse sensitivity this is accuracy versus the speed and making sure that you're not losing accuracy by increasing speed and making sure that you're increasing speed at a stable rate and making sure that you're not completely losing your accuracy as you do so because that will hinder you as a player we went a little into my hotkeys, we talked about my F usage, the unique concepts that I actually, or the unique type of hotkeys that I use that you can either copy or implement or um, even just change to meet your own personal preferences. We then went into the drills, we talked about the Tristana auto spacing drill, a lot of benefits there. We talked about the Ezreal dodge drill and randomizing dodge movements. We talked about F key drill, we then talked about the melee champion drill mouse and camera movements. Lastly, we talked about a very simple drill, map focus drill, where you're just looking at the mini-map and autoing. I mean, majority of the complexities in these drills fall into the uh, earlier ones. And then lastly, we talked about ARAM screen focus, self-position awareness, and space conditions in its most surface kind of concepts, which I'll be going over in future videos. So that is it for Lesson 3 Mechanics, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you for the next video. If you have any questions, again, about anything that I've talked about or you want clarification on anything that I've discussed throughout this video, you can feel free to leave a question in the uh, chat or in the comments below and I will answer them accordingly. Or you can catch me on Sundays streaming. Every Sunday I stream around 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. I will be live and you can always ask me questions or simply come into my chat, drop a VOD or an OPGG review. I can definitely do those and those are free of charge, of course. And uh, as I said, I hope you enjoy the video and I will see you for the next one. Take care and good luck.